live. Are we live again? Yep. All right. So we just skinned this bear, I don't know, half an hour ago, 25 minutes ago. And you put it in your pack, you rolled it up, you transported it back to your camp, or you transported it back to your truck, or your boat, or wherever you're hunting off of. Now you have a table, or a camp chair, or a log, or the bed of your pickup truck, or whatever you want to use. Now you can take the time to remove the skull out of the hide. And then once we're done with this video, I'll do another video on how to remove the feet. All right, and then it'll be a video probably tomorrow on like how to turn the ears and whatnot, but we're not gonna get ahead, get ahead of ourselves. So just take the bear, lay it out on a table. This is one we just skinned a few minutes ago. Stand it on its nose, turn it inside out. And a huge skinning knife that I was using earlier, you, you, you could use for part of it, but you're gonna need something a little bit more intricate such as like a scalpel blade type style device, whether it's a Havilon or a Havels, whatever. I just use Havel handles with Havel blades. You can buy 24 blades, um, 21s. These are both 24s. We turn it inside out so the skull's facing you. And all you're doing is just slowly removing the skin off the head. And you're following the skin, not the skull. So if you get off as much meat as you can during this process, it's less meat that your tax trimmers has to flush, or less that you have to flush when you get home if you're gonna do it yourself and send it off to get a tan by a company or something. All right, a lot of people do that too. All right. So I'll stop right here. You can see what this thing is right here is the huge mistake that probably 40% of people make when they take the head out themselves is they actually skin up the head, which is correct, and they get to right here, and they think, oh, here's the ears, I'm just gonna cut through this. Well, this right here is the ear, but a bear ear actually attaches way down here on the side of their head. This is where it attaches, and when you get to this fatty stuff right here, it looks almost like uh, the inside of a mouth or boob tissue or whatever you wanna call it, I don't know, like fat, That's you know you're right at the muscle, the fat of the ear. And you can see how the cartilage comes down and around and comes to a point and attaches. So if you're scared, you can take a knife. So I'll do one really slow to show you guys at like really slow speed. And then I'll do the other one a little faster. But you can actually separate that muscle and follow it down so you're, you don't actually screw it up and cut it off, right? So when you actually sever the ear from the canal, the ear hole should be the size of your finger. If you cut this ear off and the hole is that big, you just left half your ear on the skull. All right, so to make a cut, see the little hole? It's the size of my pinky. That's the ear. And we're gonna get into how to turn the ears on a different class, but we're just taking the skull out. And as I get to certain anatomy structures of the skull, I'll try to pause and explain where I'm at and why I'm cut in a certain place. All right. So we just got one ear completely separated. We rolled it off. This is the ear. There's the cheekbone. And now we're almost to the back corner of the mouth over here. So to catch up, we'll do the same thing with this side. But instead of going slow, I kind of know where the ears are. So I'll just follow it through, pinch it off, and cut it. And if you shoot one in the head and it's got jelly head and there's blood and just bone pieces everywhere, it's gonna be a lot tougher to decipher what's what. This is nice and clean, clean shot, clean kill. And there's really no head trauma. It didn't fall down the cliff and smash its face anywhere. So it's real nice and easy to work on. You don't see a lot of coagulated blood and blood damage. It didn't throw up inside of its mouth. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Those are the meaty part on the back right and the back left side of the heads. And as I come forward, we're almost there. I'll roll my chair around so she can stay there. When you get to these parts here where it separates and you got meat, you can already tell this is the eyebrow. This is the meat that's on top of the, the bear's head. It's basically like maybe yours and my eyebrow. So you know you're getting close. I 
I like to use a table and a chair, so I'm not bending over, hurting my back, because I do a lot of these in a, a day or a week, month, over a year, many years. It's a lot of bears. So if you sit down, get comfortable, have a sharp object, you can do a really good, clean job. It's not a race. You can see this muscle, I'm trying to leave it on the bear like the skull. But these are his eyebrows, or what would be his eyebrows. And you can take your finger and feel. You're already getting towards the socket. All right, we're almost there. That's another huge part that uh, a lot of people mess up. After the other live video finished, I actually saw that it was posted to the timeline, so you can review it at a later point, or you can share it with your friends. Again, there's, it's like buying a car. Everybody likes a different make and model of a car. There's more than one way to skin a bear, you know? So it's not saying that my way is the only way you can skin a bear and remove the hide off the carcass. This is just one way of many ways. There's a lot of ways to do it wrong, you know? But in the end, we're all trying to achieve one product, and that's a nice quality finished rug or a tanned hide or a life size that's free of a lot of damages and stuff like that. So <laughs> now we're at the back corner of this would be the bear's right eye. You can see how I kind of followed along the skull, followed along the skull, and I've got this little weird, uh, really thin membrane. So I just keep pulling it through and keep pulling it out. All right. And once you make a tiny little hole, you can see there's your membrane that goes around the eye. I can take my finger, but this finger is too big. Bears got pretty small eyes. Now I can stick it in the hole. If I cut my finger, I just cut the bear's skin of his eye. So to keep yourself from cutting the bear, I always stick my finger in there and it gives you a little bit of leverage to stick it in there. You're not gonna cut your own hand, all right? Yeah. I think it can stay pretty close to the eye socket. Yeah. So a lot of people will come across to get to the eyebrow and they think they want to sever the eye skin so they make a deep cut like that. And what they end up doing is when I turn this bear hide inside out to show you a perfect eye ring, they actually make a half moon or a big chunk out of the back of the eye. And that can be fixed, but if you put stitches in it, you know, it's pretty thin skin, pretty short hair. That's the focal point of a mount is his eyes, you know? So you wanna not make too many significant cuts, you know, especially around the eyes, you know? You don't see it so much with mountain goats, but you see it a lot with sheep. People cutting the back corners of the eyes and bears for whatever reason and the ears off. When your skull's on, you can see it's smooth and flat and little ear holes all the way down here. And I've left the majority of this meat on the skull, not have to flush it off later. Another good rule of thumb too, if you're looking at the bear from the side, wherever its eyeball is, if you drew a line straight down from its eye, that's where the back corner of the mouth is. You can see that. So if you're skinning forward and you're to the eye, and you keep going all the way up here, you end up cutting half the side of the face off. So you can make a mental note of here's the eye, so straight down below, this is the back corner of its mouth. I can make a cut, and again, I use my finger and I just hook it. Just like that. Nice skin off the face. So once you make the back corner, you leave your taxidermist enough skin, just take your scalpel or your knife and go right along the tooth line and make your cut. Give them plenty of lip. Just anything with the top. Remember, your taxidermist can take things off, but he typically can't add things, like fur or lips. You can add some things, some things are repairable, you know, but the simple mistake of taking the skull yourself, like 
I don't charge to remove skulls. I don't charge to flush the bears. I don't charge to remove the feet. It's part of the price of the mount. So if you get a bear or an animal and you keep it cool and dry and get it here, it's gonna be caped out as near perfect as possible. But if you're in the field or you're in Kodiak or for a week and I mean, some things dictate the weather, it's hot, it's, you're gonna be there, the plane can't come get you for four days. You're gonna need to get the skull out of it. You know, you don't wanna take a bear you just shot, you know, once in a lifetime trophy and leave it sitting on the beach for six days saying you tax members can fix it. So heat and humidity will create, you know, the things for bacteria to grow and then you get slippage and all the other problems. So just coming along nice and slow. Again, I'm just going right along with teeth. Doug Hoskins would be proud. I let him flush a bear one time on me, and I think he used every blade I had in the state of Alaska. We still joke about that. <laughs> so the next thing is a nose. This is a pretty integral part too. So I just skin it up around the face. Use a nice sharp blade. So. You can actually cut all the way back here where the skull ends and the cartilage starts and curve all this through and take the nose off with a big long piece of cartilage. However, if you're gonna turn the nose, it's easier just to leave it on the bear and you can use the bear's skull as leverage, as weight, and you can actually turn the nose pretty far down with it still on there and you can leave a lot of the nose on there. If that makes sense. So I'm basically almost turning his nose inside out right now, the skin, while well, it's still on there. But just come back here where the canine is, just come right up from the canine, and make a cut straight down. And just follow the jaw, follow the top part, the bone. And there's your skull. So if I take this bear now, we just took the skull out, turn it inside out, the bear actually has his whole ear all the way down inside with a little tiny I mean, it's all the way through. There's my finger coming out of it. But you have the whole ear. This is obviously gonna get fleshed. So both ears are skinned correctly. You can see his eye hole. Perfect all the way around. Obviously this gets fleshed, turned and then split. That little crease on the eye. There's the other one. So the huge mistake a lot of people make is when they're cutting, like I pointed out, they're gonna have huge gashes or pieces missing behind the eyes because they started cutting too soon. And then your nose, again, perfect nose. And then your lip skin, to leave enough lip skin for your taxidermist, that's two and a half, three inches, that's plenty. For a life-size mount, for a rug, whatever you're planning on doing, open mouth, closed mouth, all that, all the way done. You have the whole mouth. And we didn't cut up any further than what we had started from before. So if you did this in your house, and then you, now you're bringing it to your taxidermist, you still have an option. I mean, even if you cut it up, you know, bare furred like this is furred very nice, you could probably cut it all the way to here. And I'd sew it up, and you wouldn't even know there was a seam. But some bears that are pretty thin, pretty rub, pretty ratty, you're not going to want to start cutting all the way up into here, you know. But for a rug, this bear would get cut from here all the way up to probably right about there. So this would get cut. But leaving it that way. All right, what are we going to do next? We're going to do the feet next. So I got... 1858, so at 1915, we'll remove one of the feet, so 15 minutes. All right, see you back here.